cues. One of the things that we've been talking about is how can you and you know show people that you, what what your efforts are doing towards the walk. And we mentioned in our previous call, possibly you can show have donation cards to say, you know, I donated to Marianne's walk for bladder cancer, and your name is on it saying that you donated. Yeah, and this is a great technique, especially if you're in an office where you have a card that either shows you joined a team or you made a donation. And, uh, you know, if you picture an office where there's lots of cubbies and, you know, every cubby has a little walk card and yours doesn't, you're going to want that card. Um, also, you might want to consider how I'm hanging up your last year's walk t-shirt or even a picture of your team from last year or maybe even if you have a current picture from this year's team. Um, you know, sometimes they'll say, oh, I wish I was on that team with them. So that would encourage them to join your team, and then hopefully you'll take a new team picture, and they'll be on that picture the next time. So those are some of the visual cues that you might want to consider um, when you're trying to recruit um, for your team members. But the most important recruitment tool you can do is just ask. Ask, and they will come. I think that's the Fill the Dreams um, reference that I have. Um, and even if they can't participate as a team member, at least they may be willing to give a donation to support your team or your personal efforts. So the key there is just to ask. And I know that might frighten a lot of people, but once you get over that initial hump, I think it will become more easier over time. Yeah, and the key is really to ask in the way that makes most sense for you and is easiest for you. And Natalie will go into some of those techniques as we move forward. Um, do we have any questions so far? Okay, so as I mentioned before, ask and they will come. You know, who do you want to ask? You, you want to ask your family, your friends, your coworkers. You know, you want to get them involved. Maybe you want to think about, think out of the box and with your recruitment efforts. Think about groups that you belong to. It could be your book club. Um, it could be your neighbors. It could be people that you see at the gym on a regular basis. Your social club. Um, you might even want to mention it at, you know, if you're a guy or even women, you might have a monthly poker night or even your ladies group that you see once a month. You know, ask them to support. Ask them to join your team. Uh, Monica and I were talking, you know, one of the things she mentioned is maybe you want to start a walking group, you know, and you, you use that as the first activity that you're walking and raising awareness about bladder cancer. Get them to bring your friends. If you have one, get them to bring another one or get them to bring two. Encourage them to bring as many people as they can. You might want to consider um, going into the workplace, you know, your coworkers. Start a corporate team. Um, asking your place of employment, you know, if they're interested. You know, a lot of times companies are looking to demonstrate their commitment to their local community. And this, what better way is to start a corporate team at a walk. Yeah, and often corporate teams will underwrite the registration fee. So if a company can't be a sponsor of the walk, but, you know, your company wants to support you as an employee, they may pay for 10 registrations or 20 registrations. Okay. Um, also, you want to try to work to, you know, email some of your contacts. You know, if, if you have... Um, Contact, you know, we've been sending out these e-postcards. You know, you might want to send that e-postcard out, e out to some of your contacts and encourage them to just simply click on it and register. Um, or, you know, one of the other things is that you could do is possibly put it in your email signature, and I'll talk about that later. But, you know, one of the most important things that you can do is generate excitement around your recruitment efforts. And I'm going to share some techniques on how to do that later on. But, you know, think about something simple. Share your bladder, the, a story. If you're a survivor, tell them why it's important for them to walk or um, donate. You know, maybe it's sharing bladder cancer facts. And we can definitely help you and give you some facts to provide. You know, one of the techniques that we've seen is that we've had a, a a, a team captain put a bladder cancer fact on her Facebook page and then the link to her walk. So she showed the importance of why someone should give and participate in the walk by simply 
expressing facts related to bladder cancer. Yeah, and she did this every day. So it got to the point where people were excited and they wanted to see what the next fact was that she was going to promote. And maybe you even want to just have a personal challenge. You know, a lot of times people say, you know, they want to, you know, challenge their friends or a group of uh, coworkers or anything like that, something like that. So that's something you might want to consider also. So those are just some quick tips that you can use in real recruitment efforts. Now we mentioned company support and, you know, a lot of times, you know, it, it's, it's a matter of going to management and asking them to help you endorse and, and help them get them to endorse your efforts. You know, it, you know, it could be as simple as them announcing that they're going to support you and they want everyone to join you, or you and your efforts. Or maybe they can send out a communication. Um, maybe they're the ones that are going to say, oh, I'm going to step up and work with, with Mary Beth and I want to encourage everyone else to to step up and join us too. So, you know, go to that high-ranking official or management or even your community relations or your human resources department to see if they can help in your efforts. And I think it's important to remember that uh, with a lot of companies there are wellness programs where they really are incentivized to get their employees up and moving for many reasons. And, um, you know, the walk, even though it's important to us that it's a bladder cancer walk, it may be important to your company that it's a walk in general. So, you know, don't um, forget that angle when promoting it to the uh, higher, higher ups and powers that they. Absolutely. Do we have any questions so far? Okay, I'm going to keep going. Um, okay, now some to the nitty gritty, the fundraising. You know, the goal in fundraising is to make it fun. I mean, we don't want it to be arduous and, you know, time-consuming, but we definitely want to keep it light and fun and just have, you know, and keep everybody encouraged and get the momentum going with the walk. So we have a few ideas here, and I'm going to go through them and tell you how you can possibly implement them um, within, your, within your walk and your teams. So the first one is a bake sale or a potluck. And what you would have people do is make donations to support your walk or your team, and then they have the opportunity to have a tasting. So they can taste those delicious brownies that you made or the delicious brownies that you bought from the bakery down the street. Or they can, you know, do you can do like a top chef, office top chef. Monica loves that one, I think. <laughs> An office top chef, so, you know, you can have, they can have a taste of, yeah, it's great. You get, you know, three or four employees that, you know, it really depends on the size of your company to make a dish and bring it in one day. And everybody pays $5 to taste each dish, and then they rank them, and, you know, the winner gets a special prize. And, of course, you want to be friendly, not like the real top chef, and uh, only <laughs> announce the winner. Don't, don't rank everybody in the order that they won or didn't. Um, but it's a big hit, especially um, it creates a, a fun day in the office. Um, you might want to consider silent auctions. I know some of the walks, if I'm, and I'm not sure if they're on, but some of the walks will be conducting silent auctions before or after their event. So that's another source of revenue that you can have that, you know, it's pretty quick. You can ask community shops and uh, in the organizations to donate items to the auction, set it up for a small amount, and highest bidder wins the auction. You can consider raffles, and that something I'm going to have Monica speak about, but, you know, each state is different in their regulations, so Monica, you might Yeah, you, before you do any sort of raffle or 50-50, and in most states, silent auctions are fine, and, and, and what I urge people to do is if they want to try a silent auction, start small. You, you know, you don't really need more than five items, and, um, you know, just get some nice items, and um, it's pretty easy to manage. But if you're doing a raffle or 50-50, it ranges from state to state. For example, New York and New Jersey have tight restrictions on what you can raffle. And you certainly don't want, if you're in a public park, for the authorities to come by and, and um, sort of bust you and, and give you a fine for that. So um, again, there are some states where they have no restrictions at all on those types of raffles. OK. Um, one other thing, I know that Marianne's on the line, is a dime to donate. You know, they, you have a, 
restaurant who will who's willing to give maybe five percent of the total sales from that day, or if someone comes in with their walk T-shirt, they'll donate ten percent of that ticket to support your walk. So, Marianne, um, would you like to talk about how your Donna donate works in your area for Jersey Shore? Um, let me see if I can unmute you. Oh, well, I, hopefully Marianne can jump in, but um, Marianne was able to get about 60 walkers, and, mm -hmm. and they set up their time to donate uh, after the walk. It was a local restaurant, so people did that kind of, hey, you're hungry, and you went, and they gave, I think, 10%. 10%. Yeah, they donated 10% of any walker who comes in there to eat after the walk, and I'd say we probably had at least 60 people last year, and they're going to do it and again this year. That's great, Marianne. And I know Brooklyn does something similar, but they do it before their walk. And I think they do it in conjunction with another local walk um, where they can maximize the number of attendees to come and participate. Um, mm -hmm. One of the fun things, you know, very simple that you can do is how many orange M&Ms are in the jar? You know, set it up on the office kitchen table or at your desk, and the one who um, people have can donate to get a chance to guess how many are in the jar, closest one wins the jar of M&M's. That is such a simple idea, but you would be surprised how many people love that little game and how much people have made doing that. It's pretty amazing. And I know a lot of guys may like this, the putting contest. You know, you can set it up, you know, a little putt-putt golf kit type thing in your office or even at your church or some type of local meeting setting type thing. And you can really, you know, have, you can get, what, pay $10 for three tries. Yeah, we've had people do this in companies, but also in their backyard, um, you know, at a barbecue. And, you know, if, if people love that little sense of competition, seeing what division is going to win, and it becomes a, a big um, kind of to-do. And at the company that we did it, it raised $400 in one lunchtime. So um, it was a pretty good contest, and the winner was pretty happy. And you can also use it as an awareness tool also. So, you know, as they're participating, you're bringing awareness about bladder cancer. Donation jars, simple as it can be, you can put a donation jar, like I said, in, that, in the section of your office where a lot of traffic comes through. You can put it, at, you know, maybe a local diner or a local bakery will allow you to put a donation jar in there and then, you know, the loose change from the day or what they could what possibly users tips can go in there for the day, and that money would go to support your walk or your team's efforts. So very simple, very and easy. The donation jar is also good if you want to change some bad habits. So it could be your swear jar. It could be, um, you know, if you want to cut down on getting Starbucks, you can put your Starbucks money in there daily. Um, so you can use it in a lot of creative ways. Which brings it to another creative way you can use it is your brown bag days or potlucks. You know, instead of buying lunch every week, which I'm every day, which I'm guilty of, I should just probably bring my brown bag and take my ten dollars that I would spend typically on lunch and put it in that donation jar. And I'm sure I would probably have a thousand dollars by the time it's time to do the walk. So. <laughs> Um, but, you know, that's something simple. And, 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 you know, if you get yourself and maybe five other coworkers to do that with you, imagine how much money you can, you can easily raise in you a short amount of time. dedicated it once a week. You know, that is a great way to raise money. We all know the average lunch is probably $10. So that's probably one of the easier ways. And um, one of the other things we were, you know, that we mentioned wanted to mention is possibly, you know, if, you know, for ladies at least, if you're a Mary Kay rep or an Avon rep or 31 consultant, you may want to consider possibly donating a portion of your sales um, to the walk. So maybe it's 5% of the total sales from that particular, what do you call it, event. event, you would donate to the walk. Or if, you know, if you aren't a rep but you have a consultant, maybe you can ask them if that's something that they would be interested in. You know, like I said, the most important thing is to ask. If you ask, you know, you never know what the possibilities could be. Yeah, and, you know, events can be very creative. And I think as we're talking about these things, you know, we, we run the spectrum from the very simple and easy to do, like, a, you know, throwing your loose change in a jar 
to more elaborate events. And that's really going to depend on your team and the people that are around you and what you're motivated to do. I mean, you can do something as simple as a jeans day. There are still offices where you can't wear um, jeans to work on Fridays, but they'll do a special day for a charity. So something simple like that or something like, you know, having a wine tasting at your house where everybody makes a donation to Beacon and you sign them up for the walk on your team. Yeah. Those are just some quick and easy fundraising ideas. And like I said, it's definitely, these are all fun, and they're intended to be fun so that you can, you know, definitely recruit and raise money at the same time um, towards your team and your team. Does anyone else have some ideas? Or I know that we have quite a few people online, so I know we have some past well, team captains. Um, any ideas or best practices they may have that would, they would like to share with the group? Well, I'm going to keep going. And maximizing your fundraising efforts. Now, a lot of people forget this when they make their donations. And I know that this is, um, you know, something that we really honed in on last year, and that's matching gifts. You know, a lot of organizations have matching gift programs, and they'll match it dollar for dollar. Some may double it, so it might be a two-for-one match. So, you know, look into your organizations to see um, if they have a program like this. You may want to ask your boss, you know, if your team raises X amount, will they match it? You know, it could be as simple as that. Um, or, you know, I saw someone do this in, in, with their work email, is that they put in their work email, support my efforts. And I know everyone can't do that because they may have regulations within their own um, organizations, but you can even deal with your personal emails and um, in your email signature, you know, say, please support me, join my team, or make a donation to the Jersey Shore Walk or to the San Diego Walk or San Francisco Walk. Those little things you would imagine, I mean, I'm sure we all send about at least 100 to 200 emails out a day. So imagine how many people you could reach just by sending an email and them seeing that email link. Um, that link in your email. So those are some other ways in which you can maximize your fundraising efforts. Do we have any questions? Some more quick tips. You know, one thing I want to really encourage everyone to do is to customize your team and your personal pages. You know, a lot of times, you know, we have our stories, but, you know, if we don't express our stories or tell our stories, no one will understand why you're doing this. And if you need help with personalizing your page, please feel free to contact Dean or myself. We can definitely help you. Uh, we can provide possible text. You know, we can help you get the pictures in there. Um, you know, we, we're here to help with that. You know, this is how you tie back your story, your, the reason why you're doing this, so that everyone can understand it and will want to support you. Um, Remember to send it out to your contacts, whether it's via email or snail mail. You know, I think we often forget that we still have this thing called USPS, um, the United States Postal Service. But, you know, sometimes I would more than likely contribute to something if I get a piece of mail. To You know, it's kind of like a visual thing for me. If I get that piece of mail, I'm more than likely going to pick that up, and whether it's me sending a check-in or me going online to actually make the donation. But that one piece of mail will make a difference. And we have postcards and flyers that we will be um, getting out to everyone soon. And you can send uh, on the back of the postcard, you can put a, a label on it, and it says, you know, you can support my walk by visiting this link. And you can personalize it that way. Or you can add a note, hope you will join me um, and my team and helping us raise awareness. Or, you know, tell us you can provide a short statement and tell them why you're doing it. Put a bladder cancer fact on the back of it. You know, those are the things, those little things that would encourage somebody to support you. So those are some things you can think about. Another idea is via social media. You know, you send it to one, you can send it to millions. You never know who your influencers are and within your network, and that's something that we've been trying to hone in on here at Beacon, our influencers. But we had one person who um, would put out a fact a day, I believe it was, and then put the link to her walk. So it was a bladder cancer fact per 
day and her social media outlets and then the link and would it, and that would encourage people to join her walk. So we we can definitely provide you with those facts and um, to help you know put onto your social media pages if you would like. Monica, did you have anything you wanted to? No, I mean I think it's important that you ask in the way that you're most comfortable. So you know you want to talk to. Uh, I have no problem asking people face to face to give me money or or to do something for me, but that's not comfortable for everyone. So you know if email is your is your method of choice, we have great tools online in your personal center or participant center that you can use. There's email templates already done that you can personalize. Um, you know, if you know most of your friends and family look on Facebook, that's where you should be posting. If, you know, you want to start a meetup group, you know, around doing a walking club um, and you use meetup or something like that often, you know, you can do it. If you're allowed, you know, you have more of a professional network, LinkedIn is a great source. So there's so many different ways to reach people um, that any of these methods will work. I think. When we're talking about recruitment, there are some easy tips that I know from people that um, through the years have worked. And, you know, I always quote this one guy who would put up a note in the kitchenette at work that said, Brownie's in my office. And when you came into his office, he handed you a walk registration form. <laughs> so he gave you that brownie, but you had to register. Um, you know, I've had people who've thrown bagel breakfast parties, you know, whether it's before church or at their workplace where they bring in bagels and everybody registers together. So that's their little treat. Um, getting a, a gift card from, you know, the local restaurant and having a little little prize challenge to um, the winner, whoever recruits the most team members gets the gift certificate or whoever on the team raises the most money gets the gift certificate. These are simple, easy things that aren't time intensive that will help you get um, more walkers and raise more funds. So um, in the end, it's, it's more that we have for our mission work, and that's what's really important here. Yeah, definitely. And one final thing that I want to just remind everybody about, and, you know, we last year we started our Beacon Blazers program, incentive program, and it's back again this year. So we have some great prizes. Um, I can't remember all of them right now, but... Um, we're definitely going to be instituting that again. You know, a lot of people qualify for these prizes. If I'm not mistaken, at least over probably 500 people yeah. qualified for these prizes last year. So definitely, you know, we want you to raise funds and have fun doing it. And then, you know, as our token of appreciation, a special thank you, you know, these are some of the the ways in which we want to say thank you. You know, and I get asked a lot about fundraising incentive programs because I think people wonder, you know, well, what are you spending on those prizes? And um, if you know me at all, <laughs> I'm very cheap. So, um, you know, we feel it's important. It, it's funny. People like having that little, that little gift, and they're proud of what they've done to fundraise. So when we look at those kinds of programs, the return is so much bigger than, than the minimal cost for us. And then somebody has something with the beacon name and logo out in the world that somebody can say, hey, what's that organization? So it's a way that we can increase our reach and talk about bladder cancer as well. Not to mention they may ask, well, how did you get that? And you can revert back and say, well, you know, I did the walk, I was on this team, and we raised all this money. And, you know, if you join my team, then, you know, you can definitely get one of these too. So. It, it all works. It comes full circle, and, you know, it's a way for us to just say thank you. So does anyone have any questions, comments, best practices? Uh, we, we definitely want to make this an interactive. I know we have a lot of past team captains on the call, so um, if you could share your experiences, we would love to hear them. Everybody's quiet okay. today. It's late, I guess. <laughs> well, if we don't have anyone who would like to share, um, we just want to say thank you for joining. Um, we will definitely be getting some of these tips out in the, um, towards the end of the week. And, um, and if you have, have any questions or you need any help with your efforts, please do not hesitate to give us a call. We're here to help. Gina and myself are definitely here to help, and we want to work mm -hmm. and to make sure that this is successful for everyone. So, um, Natalie, this is Mary. I have a question. Uh -huh. um, 
Okay, I was wondering if we wanted to create a flyer or have our friend who's an art, you know, a designer or something do it, and we wanted to do it soon, is that something that we can do and get approval on or get logos from you all, or how would you recommend we do that if we want to post something? Yes. So there's a couple things. First of all, the walk poster itself is, has fill-in information. So if you're talking from the standpoint of being a walk organizer, we do um, recommend that you use our artwork, but if you have somebody, we can use it as approval. If you're talking about doing a flyer around a team, you really have leeway to do what you want. I, I always ask that people keep it in good taste, but um, you know, if it's just something that you're promoting your team, you don't need any approval from Beacon to do that. You can make your own flyer or make something cool um, and, you know, link back. And if you need help with any, you know, pictures from last year's walk or something like that, we have some, we definitely have those on file for us. Yeah, especially for people who have new walks and you're looking for some, some custom art, you know, we can do that. Um, you know, I always tell people, take your team picture from last year and put block out somebody's face and say, you're, you're a face here. <laughs> and, uh, hmm. you know, people will get the hint that you want them to join you. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. Sure. Anybody else have any questions? Okay. Well, if there aren't any, we recorded this so that we can um, send this out to everyone later on, and you can refer back to it for ideas. And as I mentioned before, we will be sending out a quick cheat, quick cheat sheet type document tools for you, tools for you um, towards the end of the week. And it's just a one, quick one pager that you can use um, to, to circle back to. But I want to thank everyone for coming on tonight. And we look forward to hearing from you and seeing what great work your teams will be doing for this year's walk. Thank you. We appreciate all of you for what you do. And uh, it really means a lot. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Everyone have a great night. Some nice ideas. Thank you.